thanks for your interest in the EDSS Steward Clog. As many of you know, the Steward Clog is not a new concept, and although it's been primarily used for laminitis and foundered cases in the past, over the last several years we found it to be much more versatile and used for treating many more lameness conditions. Although with the diversity of the usage, there's been a need to diversify the application protocol as well to better meet the specific needs of hoof pathology. For instance, in cases of ring bone, coffin joint disease, and collateral ligament injuries, where the lateral leverages are a primary concern, the perimeter of the clog needs to be smaller and fit the foot similar to a standard shoe. Therefore, being able to nail the clog on is essential in these cases. On the other hand, when you have cases of white line disease or chronic laminitis where you have poor quality hoof that requires some hoof wall resecting, a need for a broader attaching surface is necessary to facilitate the use of screws and adhesives for securing the foot to the clog. There will be times when horses are so painful they're not able to hold the foot up for very long. Again, screwing and gluing the clog to the foot is helpful which enables most of the work to be done with all four feet on the ground. We'll demonstrate both of these primary application techniques as well as show you a simple way to extend hoof wall in cases where prolapse sole extends beyond the length of the wall. This first horse we'll demonstrate on is a chronic laminitis horse that also has a Cushing's or metabolic condition. He is best managed with a very specific dietary program and is mechanically more comfortable when he's in the clogs. As you can see, without the clogs he struggles a lot and is not very comfortable, especially when he's turning. Before we used the clogs, he was even more painful both going in a straight line and when asked to turn. However, when he's in the clogs, he becomes more sound and has very little problem getting around for light riding or just being active which is a critical part of the treatment for this condition as well as the overall health and well-being and long-term soundness of the horse. We're ready to get underway with a demonstration on applying the steward clog. And as I said, we're going to show you several different ways of doing this. Uh, before I get started, I want to show you just some of the features about this. It started out actually designed by Dr. Uh, Mike Stewart, who started out with just a piece of plywood. And as the horses wore this flattened piece of plywood, it ended up to be a shape very similar to this. Now we've, uh, we've improved on the, 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 the material uh, over the last year or so. And uh, so this is the latest version of that. And what we've done, we have an option here with these different nail hole, these segments here, where we can actually nail this on. We pre-drill the holes and we'll show you how to do that as we go on here. There's a small tapered area right here to ensure that the breakover gets way back. This material is, such, is made such that you can rasp even more of a breakover into it. And as these clogs wear, you'll find that that breakover will actually wear more back underneath of the foot, giving the horse the option of a little more comfort getting over the, t over the front of his foot. So on the foot side, this is, uh, there's an island right here, as you see. That's basically where the apex of the frog is. There's two lines, line-up marks right here and here. And before I put this on, I'll, re I'll draw those lines with a, with a magic marker. And I'll bring that right out to the side here. And I'll show you as I go through this, I'll do the same thing to the foot as well. So this helps us to line this, thing, this clog up with respect to the coffin bone through the frog. Now, because we're going to be applying this to a horse with laminitis, uh, I want the option to be able to raise this if I want to. His hoof is going to be here, and if I want to raise his heel to get rid of some of the tension on the deep flexor tendon, I need to have that option available to me. What we use for that are these rails that are designed to fit on the EDSS system. And uh, so I'll pre-drill the holes into this clog before I put them on. It makes it a lot easier to do in, uh, before I get them applied. I just want to have that option. 
We use this clog for a variety of other things, for ring bone, collateral ligament injuries, and we don't always use the, uh, the rails for that, so there's no need to pre-drill the holes in the manufactured state. So before I do that, I want to take a drill bit that is the size of that pin right there. And you can, you can have a selection of bits, no doubt, and you can just find one that's just that size or slightly larger. Can be, it can have a little bit of play in that, and it's best probably if it does. So what we'll do, I'll put this on this clog where I want it to be. I want it to end up right about at this back margin of the back part here. So what it, where I'm going to drill that hole is going to be on this little spot right there. You can see how you line that up? Okay. So I'll make a mark with my marking pen right there. In the strongest part of this diamond section, I'll do the same on this side here. All right. This material it will probably take a hold of that drill bit, so you best if you don't drill all the way through. Just merely get a hole that goes into that clog. There you go. You can check it ahead of time to see that it fits down on there and that's basically how it works. With this small a clog, you'll want this end to be trimmed away and we'll do that. If we decide that we're going to use these, then we'll trim this away later. When you apply this to the foot, we'll take a screw like this and we'll of course have to change our bit here. This is a basically a one inch screw. Once you pull it, put it on there, we just screw it down like that. There you go. It gives us a little bit of extra elevation. It places this breakover point even more inside of this original position here. So it makes it easier for this horse to turn laterally. So this is the advantage to having the rails. And uh, again, we use this primarily for horses that were shoeing uh, and for laminitis, and particularly the ones that have a Cushing's related syndrome. It, appear, it seems as though those horses have a, uh, a need for extra elevation because the tension on the deep flexor tendon is a very important issue for them. So with that, we want to have that option available before we uh, even apply the shoes. Okay. Okay. With any of these laminitic guys, finding the true uh, consistency of the frog is very important. You'll see all this chalky material back in here. We need to remove that portion. Get down to some very functional material. You'll see how it separates right there. Any of this stuff needs to be removed. We'll generally use impression material in these so we don't want to have all of this non-functional material that won't support the foot in a proper way. This also, by properly exfoliating this foot, you can get a true sense of how much fo actual foot there is. This part has been exposed, so it's a little bit harder. We'll take, remove that, especially this area in the central sulcus. These are very common principles that we use for exfoliating the feet. Now this, this foot has been shod with a clog and as you notice we've taken the dorsal wall back so there's not a lot of extra distortion that's out in front. Most of the, the, the bearing surface of the foot is in this back part. So we're going to exfoliate this. Only the crumbly stuff. You can start to see the texture change. I'm going to exfoliate the back portion primarily. Now you can see some waxy material come through there. You can also see the plane that I'm going to be trimming this start to develop. Okay, You can see the plane of this shiny surface there. 
Okay. Typically with laminetic horses, when you're re-shoeing them or even shoeing them for the first time, the part that you have to be very careful is, is this area over the tip of P3. One, we want as much sole thickness over that as possible. And how we derotate the foot is how we preserve this area of the foot. In the times that we've reshod this horse, I'll bet you we haven't taken a quarter of an inch off of this and probably two inches off the back. So exfoliating the foot ahead of time very specifically is important. So I'm going to draw a line right there at that area that I've exfoliated. It's the, line, it's the functional part of the foot and I'll draw a line on each side. And as you can see that I'll take hardly anything off here and I'll take hardly anything off here, but most of it will come in this area. And I'll start derotating right there to ensure that I have a gap or a heightened area here and here. I'll start derotating that foot there and I'll start derotating it there. And I'll show you why and how important that is here as I go. All right, now we're going to match this line up with the line across the apex of the frog. And so I'm going to go ahead and draw that in. And how I've determined where that is, is I'll find the widest part of this foot. And it's in the general area of where the bars terminate into the, the central, into the commissures of the frog, this widest part, because it's easier to find once I've made this arced line across here. That's the widest part of the foot, approximately one inch forward of that is where the tip of the frog is. That's going to be my landmark that's going to set right there meaning the front of this clog will be about in this position right there. The seated out area here is basically designed so that there will be no contact over this area of the foot and that's in the general area of the tip of P3 and that's the area that we do certainly that we want to keep protected especially horses with laminitis. Okay it's time to do the hoof prep now. I'm going to start as I mentioned at this line right here leaving plenty of space there and I'm going to trim above that line all the way back and this should be a continuous straight line. There's the line that I started there. I'll do the same on this side and just continue straight on back. You should end up at the same height as the frog. As you can see I've got just a small amount right there to, le to level with. <coughs> And, I, and it's nice to have that extra amount, especially right there, because I don't want this area to be sensitive or close to any sensitive material. So the first rasp strokes I'll take will be right here to get the heel back as far as I can. Get that heel set. I'll have this heel set. Once I get the heels down to where there's an equal height of, of distance from this area of the wall to the level of the sole on both sides then I'll go ahead and start flattening this foot out. My objective in the end is to have a gap through this area of the foot right there. I don't want to have any contact over the sole in this region. With any of these laminatic guys, it's, you want to continually hoof test each time you reshoe them. And I think the areas that are of deepest concern are these right around the tip of P3. This horse is healed up quite nicely, so he doesn't really have any sensitivity to speak of until we get right back into this region. And because of the displacement of P3 within that hoof capsule, P3 is probably closer to this point right here than it is out there in a particularly normal range. In order to line the apex of the frog up with this point here and, and with these lines, I'm going to continue this line across that apex and then bring up marks on this outside as well as on this side. So when I place that on there, then I can line these marks up with the corresponding marks. With this application, we're going to, we're actually going to glue this on. We're going to set it with two screws in the medial lateral toe quarters. So we're going to have to prepare the foot on the sides, and I'll do that in just a moment. But I'm going to pre-drill my holes, and I want you to look very closely at what, I'm, where I'm going to prepare these holes. If you look at this, this is the wall right there. This is the sole right there. And right between those, in exactly the same spot that you would drill 
you would put a, a nail in, I'm going to drill a pilot hole for the screws to come down. It makes it easier and more confident to get the screws onto, into the clog uh, without having to guess whether you're going to get into sensitive material. So I'm going to place my drill bit right there at that junction. And at the same angle that you would drill a nail, I'm going to go ahead and put that in. Right on that spot that I've designated for my hole. Okay, that's all there is to it. It's very simple, easy. If you're even close, they'll let you know. You're, I've never had one that has, has had a problem yet. And again, it's just very much as though you were dri driving a nail and, uh, and you just drill those pilot holes. They don't have to be very high on the hoof wall. So that's the... Okay, now once I've got that done, I'm going to prepare this sidewall for composites. And uh, with this particular application, I'm going to use Equilox in the form of uh, hoof life. And uh, any of the composites seem to work well for this. If you have a particular uh, composite that works best in your region, then feel free to use it. But with this, I have no problems with either any of the VetTech products or with the Equilox products. So anyway, what I'm going to do, I'm going to prepare this sidewall all the way back and around the end of the heel. And especially in like this groove here, I'm just going to clean that out. Now I'm going to try to leave my mark where I'm going to uh, line this clog up to. If I do uh, happen to remove it, then I'll redraw that line. So I'll move around it here and then just, uh, just for sake, I'm going to redraw that line right there. Okay. Do the same thing on the other side and then we're ready to put the impression material in the bottom and, uh, and then we'll, we'll uh, go ahead and apply the clog. What we're doing here is we're putting a little bit of magic cushion down in the com deep part of the commissures. It's, it's a kind of a new principle that we're starting to do. It keeps the bottom end of that uh, very healthy, very functional. And as you'll notice, he's not touching the sidewalls with his hands and especially with his glove. So that's all that's necessary is just put a little bit down there and then we'll fill the rest of it with impression material. The next step is to apply the impression material. We still insist that uh, until you get very familiar with using the impression material and, and, and the application of it, that we, to keep from overfilling this area, we do a couple of different things. Right here in the junction of the frog and the wall, we'll cut two little holes so that the excess that might be built up inside can at least has a place to come out. And so I'm going to take this impression material and get an appreciation for what will fill to this portion of the foot. And I'll take just a little bit more and we'll get equal comp components of the colored material. Now I've got my impression pad. The narrow side is what will fit this foot better. And so I've got it all set up with a cross tape on it. Mix this, pulling it like you would taffy blending it that way and once it's well blended streaks are pretty much gone place it in the bottom of the foot try to keep it off of these flattened areas in the back part and if it looks like there's an obvious overabundance then just merely take it away and then place place the pad on smash it down as best you can pull the tabs down and I've, I've taken some of this tape off and rewrapped it so that it makes it easier to apply to the foot here. So half the tape goes on the foot, half on the block, and over the bulbs of the heels. Try to pull the hair out of the way. Usually a wrap or two is enough. and then let them step right down on that. You want a good two or three seconds there for them to stand on that, and that's usually enough.
right? Okay, we've given some time for this to set and pull that off of there. As you can see, this is perfectly flat now, which gives us a good base to, uh, to place the clog on. Again, the seated out area ensures that any pressure over this area will be relieved through this region here. As long as we get it placed accurately on the foot, according to our marks, then we're gonna have good clearance over the tip of P3 through this seated out area. It's very important that you do this, particularly with laminatic horses. You'll see us apply uh, material like this in other horses and there's not as much of a concern of sole pressure over this region. So we've got our holes drilled for the, for the preliminary attachment and I'm gonna redress this side and, and this side as well because we've put tape on it. So we want to refreshen those edges up. So I'll do that and then we'll apply the clog and we'll be on our way. We have to use a, a Teflon coated screw. One of these deck screws work very well for this purpose. We just start these in the hole, give them a little bit of a twist either by hand or with the drill, just to get them started. At this point, it's helpful to have two people, one to hold the horse's foot, the other to put the screws in. And like the, like the nailing process, we're gonna just get this screw started, and angle it in just as much as you can. There, like so. Just enough to get it started, you can see it, kind of pushed away, back it out just a little bit, just to get it started. Okay, great. And then we'll take the other one and set it down. Until we just pull that clog up to the foot. At this point we can turn loose of it and it'll be all right. This is the critical part of, of pressure or just contact with this clog process. You want that screw to go down and you want this to meet the foot perfectly without any undue pressure. You notice it just touched the hoof wall right there. Same is true over here. And if you get a, get a response from the horse, then of course you back it out about a quarter of a turn and that's just about the right amount of tension. The rest of the process will be putting screws in the sides. As you can see where lineup marks are there. And we'll use a standard deck, uh, sheetrock screw for this and we'll put these in next to the hoof wall. Like so. Just to the edge of the clog here. The idea is is that this will take on the composite around that head and act as an anchor. Whoops, a little bit too tight. Okay. And we'll put at least three of these in. Okay, in around the edge. Whoop. You can use four or you can use more. Lay it down some. There you go. A little bit more. Okay. So these act as anchors. The composite will stick quite well to the sidewall, but it won't stick to this clog. So it act, so it'll actually fill around these different screw heads, having them in as far as they are and just near the hoof wall will allow this to act as somewhat as a clip. It'll keep it from sliding sideways and it will, uh, with the composite on there, it holds it quite firmly. We try to keep it as much forward as we can, but it's certainly no problem if you need to, to go clear to the very back of the foot here. Whatever it takes to hold that firmly on the foot. Laminatic horses don't like any movement of that hoof capsule because the attachment is very fragile and it's very painful. So any amount of movement that we can stop is going to be helpful to these guys, particularly these, these Cushing's horses. With this particular product, Hoof Life, it's an Equilox based product, takes about, you can get four feet out of this full tube using it in this particular manner. So I'm going to mark off what I'm going to compress into that tube. and. Uh, I don't have any problems using this, pushing it in 
instead of using a caulking gun. Okay, you're going to get the small amount of white and a larger portion of the other. Push just a little bit more out. Okay. And we'll go ahead and mix this. Mix this together. This stuff will take about four or five minutes to set. Gives you a lot more working time than the super fast. There's times when I want the super fast and need it more than this to particular material, but this seems to work real well in all kinds of weather. Obviously, the hotter it is, the quicker it's going to set. The colder weather is going to be slower. So most of these composites are that way. So again, the objective here is to is to utilize those screws, those anchor heads. Make sure it smears in around those. You can leave this front one by itself. This particular material will set at the end of its cycle where some of the other the equithane products sets on the front side of the cycle. And it's nice to be able to smooth it up. Okay, there you go. We can finish that off a little later on after it sets up. With this foot we're going to demonstrate a wall extension and the reason that we're going to do it is similar to a foot like this because this part of the foot is potentially sensitive. There's a little erosion as you can see with this dip in here but these two areas are, have always been very sensitive so we're going to extend the wall out. It crumbles away on this side and we're just going to reinforce it and build it up just a little bit higher so we'll have some clearance across this area of the foot right there. And this is how we go about that. We'll take the, I want to be very specific about being able to lock, put, put some composite out here, loop it over the top of this, and lock it into what wall is here. So I'm going to cut a groove right next to the sole and wall junction. And the reason for that is, is that this composite will lock into this side of it. I'm going to do the same on this side. And I'm going to build a bridge out of purple podiatry pads right into this region here or across the whole sole so that we expose this region and the, the podiatry pad will be approximately this high. So we're able to put the composite here, here, and outside the wall to lock this in and make that wall taller to give us the clearance that we need. The next step is to, is to build the dam around that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw an imprint of the outer wall and then if you look at the bottom of this, get back here, you'll see that there's a good quarter of an inch of distance from this line that I've drawn here and the inside edge of where I want to dam it up. I want to dam up right to this area. So that distance there is going to be about there. So I want to make cut this out so that this part will stick onto the sole and expose this outer wall. So I'll draw my line approximately that same distance there. And there. I'll cut out everything outside of this platform here. These purple podiatry pads could be used for a variety of things, and this is only one more items on a long list of things that can be that they're useful for. 
I can save those chunks and add them on the inside of this if I like. I'll turn that over and place it on the foot, glue it, because I'll pull this tab off and stick it right to it there. I can take these other sections and cut them like so and glue them on to the top part just to increase the height of this. And here, let me show you what I'm talking about. Okay. The composite is going to sit on this part and down in there. Okay. I'm going to freshen this edge up right here. Because the composite is going to come on the outside of this. I'm going to round this edge off just a little bit. Okay, I'm going to do the same on the other side. I'm going to be careful not to touch this, those parts. I'm going to freshen this ground surface up, freshen that surface up. I'll take the pad that I've cut and I'll place it on here so that I can expose the wall. You see where I'm at there? Now I can go ahead and have him set his foot down. And he's not going to contaminate that ground surface, as long as you're on a flat surface. I could add extra height to that with these pieces that I have cut for scraps. And that's what I'm going to do. Take this section here, add extra height to it, like there. Take the other side and add extra height right there. And if I need to, which I probably won't, add some height to that. So you can see I can add extra height here to the wall, and I'll do that now, and on this other side. That way, I can, with a lot of these horses that are very sore, they can't, you can't hold their foot up very long, so you have a limited amount of time. So I'll put a bead of material here, a bead of material there, and I can set that foot down, and you can see that it won't contact the ground. And that's the objective. Okay. I'm going to run a little bit out here on the ground. I'm going to come right back on this, and you can see how I'm not going to be able to, I won't get any over onto that sensitive part of the foot. I'll run one bead there. I'll come over and do the same on this side. Again, I mentioned that, as I mentioned before, these horses oftentimes are uncomfortable and they won't stand here very long. I'll run this as far forward as I need to, and then I'll run the bead outside onto the hoof wall to help reinforce that wall. Come back on this side, do the same thing. I can build this as high as I want to. Obviously, this is going to compress if I, if I put it down. So I'm, I'm going to hold it up for as long, as long as I can just to get it set. thing is I can add more to that to reinforce it as I go. So I'm, my main objective is just to get this to set before I have to put it down. And I, for this reason I use the, the Superfast, Vettec Superfast, because I want it to go off as, as quickly as I can. And you can see it's starting to get firm already. If I need to, I can let it down. It's not going to bother that at all. So at this point in time, I can put another tip in and reinforce that upper part from one side to the next. Okay. I can build this wall as strong as I need it. Just keep layering this up. Come to the other side and do the same thing. Quite often we have situations that uh, require us to put a whole section of a foot in. This clog is extremely helpful in that respect because it gives you a, a landing that is solid enough and if you attach it similar to what we've done on this other side, you can add as much hoof wall as you need to with the new composites that are out. And uh, this two layers of purple podiatry pads are extremely helpful because it doesn't destroy this initial segment that we've put on there. So it's uh, just one of those little tools that are extremely handy to have that we didn't have 10, 15 years ago.
generally about uh, 10 minutes or so to be sure that this is good and solid is the best. And you can peel these off. Boy, they stick real nice. And what you can see as I pull this out, you can see the extra height that I have here now. Tremendous advantage to those horses that have a huge prolapse through the middle of their foot. I'm going to go ahead and level this off a little bit, tidy it up a bit, just to make it a little easier to, to apply the clog. I can go ahead and get my hands on it now. It's not a problem. The thing I want to caution you about is if you run your rasp sideways, it's going to, at least in the early stages of this, you may pull this a little bit more than you want. So I suggest that you run your rasp front to back on this to get it to flatten off. And, all, and you can take it down as much as you think you need to to get the desired height. As you can see here, I've got plenty of clearance now over the sole area of that foot and I tell you this is one of the most helpful things I've ever had I can fill the whole bottom of this with with uh, equine EDSS putty and this horse will think he's on Air Jordans it's just a tremendous tool to have this extra extra rubber inside here to give him the cushion he needs I'll tidy up the sides a little bit I'm going to round this bottom edge just a little bit because I'm going to put my screws in like I did on the other side right into that bottom edge there. So I want that to be fairly smooth. Okay. This is going to be a lot larger cavity obviously because we've extended the walls. So that's the proper amount of place there. I'm going to do the same thing, put the impression pad on. Okay, and we'll get him to stand on that, fill that void very nicely. Keep in mind that we had this all pre-mapped out beforehand. This, this dam that we that created, this wall extension, ended right in that lamina junks wall layer. So we're going to go ahead and use that same reference. And drill our pilot holes there. Same thing, sneak right underneath of that, angle it out just a little bit. Okay, again, we're just going to start this screw slightly. Okay, great. We're going to go ahead and take this one down. We've got our lineup marks made here. Okay, just go down until it just touches. Great. Now we can go ahead and put our foot down. Because this clog is a little bit narrower than the other one, because of the composite, we're going to go ahead and We'll have to take it in just to where this will be over the edge just slightly and our composite that we'll use will have to go outside of that just some. Okay. What we'll do is we'll trade off with this, let this side set just a little. And the thing about it is with this nice new composite there and I've treated, I've rasped it a little bit. It doesn't take much to hold around this and then on to that. So.
lemon has tightened up quite nicely. For the last couple of years, it was really kind of spread open. But. Okay, we're out walking him now, getting some ideas as to what adjustments we might be able to make. As you notice, he still turns a little tough and he's landing toe first for the most part. So we're going to add a little rail to him and then we'll take him for another walk and see what, uh, see what improvements we can make. Okay. We pre-drilled our holes, of course anticipating that we may need to have some adjustments and then we'll just take a this is a three-quarter inch screw in this small a clog nippers nippers we're just going to snip the end of this off here Get a nice clean break over there. So. We've raised his angle a little bit with the rails, made it possible for him to get a little bit more on the heel contact, and so we're going to leave him this way for a while. Hopefully he'll wear, wear the clog and the rails into a better position, and, uh, but obviously he seems much happier and, and uh, can turn a lot better for sure, especially on a little softer going. He's much better that way. So. With this particular application, we're not uh, treating a laminatic horse here, so we fit the clogs equal to the w width of the foot, and our, our positioning will be slightly to the rear. Generally speaking, the back part will come right at this dipple in the back of the frog here. You want to make sure that the heels cover well, and objective in this case is to give her lateral, medial breakover, as well as the anterior breakover, and that's our critical thing. Now, when I get ready to, to drill these nail holes, I look down the wall, and I, these two holes are going to be straight down. The two in front will be angled out slightly, and so I keep that in mind as I get ready to drill these holes in preparation to, for before I apply this. So, okay. I've got the foot prepared just like we do all the rest, to the level of the sole, equal on both sides. There's approximately an eighth of an inch of height from this wall down to that live sole, so I know that the coffin bone is equal in lateral medial balance to the ground.
All right, I'm going to pre-drill these. As I mentioned before, these two are going to be straight down. The front two are going to be angled out. Now, if you're a little unsure, you may want to just wobble the bit just a little bit, just to give you an opportunity to just position it at the last moment in the best possible way. Okay. Again, I'm going to cut two little vent holes here so that the excess material can leak out. This is again not a laminatic horse, so we're just going to put the impression material in here, a little bit extra. Place that again back here. I'm going to set one nail there and set the other nail here. I'm going to let her step down on this just to get, get her to uh, push that impression material in as deep as possible. Okay. Okay, as I've mentioned before, in, in finishing these, I want a little longer clinch because of the angle of the heads here. And with my clincher, I turn them over, make sure I'm on the head here, and just spike that out enough to where I can turn it over and then crunch them in. Smooth them off a little bit. And with what excess is under the front here, we'll just bevel it at the same angle as the clog right up underneath the foot.